Interpreting Geologic History Interpreting the history of rocks on Earth is completed using two methods. Absolute dating and relative dating. Now, absolute dating is determining the actual age of a rock or fossil using radioactive decay. Say I had a dinosaur fossil and I used radioactive decay, I could say that this dinosaur skull is 65 million years ago. That's absolute dating, giving something an exact number. We won't be dealing with that today. We'll actually be looking at relative dating, which is determining which rock, fossil, or geologic event came first, second, third, etc. So if we look at the layers of rock shown in this picture, um, I can assume that the trilobite fossil is older than the dinosaur fossil because it's located further down in the ground. So relative to one another, the trilobite is older than the dinosaur fossil. So that's really where we'll be taking this video, um, just focusing on geologic sequencing. To set the stage, we need to talk about the law of uniformitarianism. Um, geologists and other scientists rely on a very simple rule. And that rule says that anything that has occurred in the past, like storms, volcanic eruptions, wave action, tides, earthquakes, glacial activity and the movement of ice. So scientists assume that if it happens now, it happened in the same way 4.2 billion years ago uh, on early Earth. Most of our work today will be dealing with geologic cross-sections. Now a cross-section is looking at the inside of something. So if you made a sandwich, and this one looks delicious, if you cut it in half and you stared at the inside of it, that's a cross-section. So if you want to put it into a geologic sense, this is also a cross-section. You can see the different layers, the stripes, those all represent layers of sedimentary rock that have been put down in the past. So a cross-section of the Earth would look something like this. It can also look something like this. On, on a Regents, uh, on a class test, um, this is what a cross section would look like. It's black and white. Um, to do this accurately, to really use these uh, cross sections to, 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 to talk about the history of the Earth, we also need our reference table. Specifically, in our reference table, we need to look at the sedimentary rock chart because the patterns or the map symbols um, tell us what kind of rock we're looking at. So conglomerate, breccia, sandstone, siltstone, shale, all the way down to bituminous coal. Those map symbols help us identify the layers. So we can say, all right, I have a layer of conglomerate because that's the map symbol. I have a layer of siltstone. I have a layer of shale. I have a layer of sandstone. Those are the patterns, the map symbols, from my reference table. Our job is to be like a ge geologist uh, and determine which layer came first, second, third, etc. Uh, remember, a geologist would be looking at the cross-section, not necessarily standing on the surface. They're not standing up where those trees are. This is something that's been exposed, it's been uplifted, and now they're looking at it from the side. Okay? And remember, we talked about this, most sedimentary rocks are formed by sediments being deposited on the bottom of a body of water. So uh, streams run into a lake or an ocean. As they do that, whatever they're carrying gets dumped into that river. And the dumping process uh, involves um, the deposition. And over time, those layers are cemented and compacted by the weight of the layers above them in the water and uh, form into sedimentary rock layers. This is part of the rock cycle, something we talked about. We can also say that because of weathering and erosion at the surface, 
sedimentary rock layers have to be lifted out of the water if they show any signs of weathering. So after those layers are laid down from deposition and compacted and cemented, some force like folding or uplifting raise them from where they were once buried in an ocean or sea above the surface line and expose them to the elements like water and wind. So that's stuff that we've talked about, and we have to keep that in mind as we talk about these layers. Um, so back to our cross-section. So by way of uniformitarianism, the layers of sedimentary rock shown in this cross-section had to be laid down in an ancient ocean or sea by deposition. They were compacted, they were cemented, and then they were lifted up. Once they were lifted up, some were weathered and eroded. So that's something we are all assuming and taking into consideration. And here's our first rule. Layers of rock on the bottom are the oldest. We call this the principle of superposition. Assuming uniformitarianism happened, the layers that get laid down first are going to be on the bottom, and anything that comes after is going to be piled on top. Let's apply that rule. I want to sequence these layers. I want to talk about what came first, what came second, what came third, so on and so forth. So follow my red arrow. The first event here would have been the deposition of layer D. Now, I know that's siltstone, but for now, we're just going to call it D. The next event would be the deposition of layer C. And then it would be the deposition of layer B. And then the deposition of layer A, right? Seems simple, right? Those all got laid, laid down, and D is the oldest because it's on the bottom. But after A was deposited, right, remember these are layers of sedimentary rock, something had to happen. What happened was an uplifting event. This material was lifted out of an ancient sea or an ancient ocean, and it was now raised above sea level. Once it became above sea level, it was weathered and eroded. So that green line you can see is very uneven. And the trees tell us that that layer has been eroded, uh, has been weathered, and turned into soil. So we know that th that is something that happened once this got lifted out of the ocean. So that's a complete sequence of events, from the deposition of D all the way to the weathering and erosion. That would be something you would have to do, or be able to do, with a cross-section like this. Rule number two. Sedimentary layers are deposited horizontally, and any def deformation of those layers will include folding, faulting, and tilting. So we call this rule original horizontality. And that's stating that everything gets laid down flat. And if it's not flat, it's been folded, faulted, or tilted. So in other words, we have a cross section that looks like this. We can see that it's not horizontal. These layers are tilted. And we can also see that there was a fault, right? The one side is higher than the other, it's like slid down, that's, that's a sign of faulting. So this cross-section makes it hard because we can't see all the layers. So let's follow my red arrow again and find the first layer that was laid down. I have to compare both sides, and if I compare them carefully, the first layer is this limestone. I can say that because if I look at both sides, left it goes limestone siltstone sandstone limestone sandstone on the other side it goes siltstone sandstone limestone sandstone it's missing that bottom layer of limestone so i can make that assumption that either it's buried or it's been eroded or we just can't see it so that's the first layer next would be the deposition of this siltstone then there would be the deposition of the sandstone because those two layers would match up and then there would be the deposition of this limestone and then this sandstone. Now, what happened next? Hard to tell. So I'm going to occupy the same level of event that a tilting event happened, as well as a faulting. I cannot tell which one came first, so I'm going to put them on the same line. And that's totally okay because there's just well, this is relative dating. There's no there's no exactness. It's all relative. So we know that that came next because the tilting and the faulting cut through all the layers and because it cuts through all the layers they were all affected we'd have to assume that all those layers were laid down first and then they were faulted 
And then we can assume that it was lifted out of the ocean or lifted out of the sea and exposed to weathering and erosion. So like our other example before, uplifting and weathering and erosion are like our last two statements.